So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're <laughs> we're recording now, okay. but uh, I can edit and everything. Oh, nice. But to give you a little lay of the land, Comedy Advice Podcast, how the layout is feeling really comfortable. How's the now. chair you feel This good? is great. Yeah, yeah it's chair? super good ergonomic. Good. My lumbar is completely <laughs> supported. <laughs> Jeez. It's amazing. So, uh, <laughs> so how it goes is we'll talk a little bit about, about you, oh, okay. the special guest, okay. and then we'll give some advice. We can give some comedy advice, but then we'll give some advice from questions that fans have sent in. Oh, oh and these are questions from Reddit. These are questions from Yahoo Answers, the barnacles of the internet. Oh so they're very God. silly questions. Okay. We can give very silly advice, and yeah. Just fun will ensue. I hope my future wife is watching because you need to make me feel as good as Stefan does. Right? <laughs> it's Stefan, right? It's Stefan, yes, right? it's Stefan. Right, right. Make sure that I feel, That's I already feel amazing. <laughs> Oof. All right. I'm, let's get it. I'm glad you feel good, man. On a comedy advice podcast. I'm your host, Stefan Satani. Join me today, Anthony A. Oh, what up, what up from South Valley of Albuquerque, New Mexico, a.k.a. Young Grammar Era, a.k.a. Little Spoon, a.k.a. Lil Ha, a.k.a. Economy Parking. What's good? Oh, my God. I'm going to have to edit out the full shot to just be of you because my <laughs> mouth is wide open hearing that. That's the train, man. But that's why you're part of the, the host of the Dana Cortez Show or one of the co-hosts. Nice. And you're also a stand-up comedian. Yes. This is, and anything else? Do you, mm. not that that's not enough. I don't want to denigrate uh, all not, that. Man, son and brother. How about that? Son and brother. There loving son and brother loving or just son, son, and son and brother? brother? Loving son and brother. <laughs> nice. I love it. That's Sometimes, though, God. Sometimes. You, got siblings, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I have to say, I first heard about you from, I think on Instagram, I found okay. you from Reese Muniz. And then I was seeing his stories, and I saw that you guys were going to perform together. And then I saw you were on the radio. I was like, who is this dude? <laughs> and then I went to Sydney Smith's show. Shout out to Sydney Smith. Amazing Damn, man. Dude. And you were on there, and I was aghast. I was blown away from your stand up, which. I, I don't want to say I wasn't expecting to be blown away. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Like, here's the thing. You just got to set that bar low at any point you can. And when people are like, I wasn't expecting much. It's easy. Whoop, whoop. Dude, I was, I, I think it's because I was expecting, I don't know, for some reason I think, oh, you can't do two things well. And so I was seeing that you were awesome at your radio show because I started listening Appreciate to it. the Dana Cortez show, which... First off, uh, we'll, we'll, t- we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. No, we're sitting here. We're sitting here where we do the live stream of the Dana Cortez show. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I feel like I'm in Disneyland, by the way, dude. I, <laughs> folks, I got an inside tour of the radio station. I got to say hello to some of the the best acts of the radio show. Yeah, shout, is, out to the, shout out to the Power 98.3 gang, Complex, Crystal Kato, Jesus, everybody like that, and... Um, I, uh, this is going to sound a little uh, patronizing if you want, but I just think yeah. Phoenix is such a beautiful town for like entertainment, oh, and yeah. it supports its local entertainment in the valley. I hate to use the word local, but just it like the the people who are here. If you give to the city, they'll give back, and it's a fun. I I uh, I really appreciate this place. Oh, it, it yeah. seems absolutely amazing. The building and in the valley. How about that? That's there you go. all the way around. There you go. <laughs> and, and yeah, I, I got to meet Jesus today, which was really cool, and everyone was so nice too. Yeah. Everyone gave me a nice pound. <laughs> Sounds like a horrible euphemism, but <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had all pounds and smiles, so it was a great, great time. Uh, but uh, this is the place where you you sit here, yeah. Dana and DJ Automatic. Yes, and DJ Automatic, Dana, of course, as they are a married couple. Yes. You are the single friend. Yes. Right now, and you've been. I think I, if my memory serves me correctly, and my math, because I saw on Instagram you had an Ask Me Anything, and it was 111 weeks ago, and you said that you had done radio for five years and Dana Cortez show for four. So yeah. by this point, it's six years. Damn, radio no, and five. So good, yeah. Oh my god, my mom will be so proud. She's a math <laughs> teacher. A lot was riding on that. So I wanted to ask. I mean, because you started out in Albuquerque. Mm. How did you start to get into radio, and was that something that you first thought, oh, this is what I want to do, or did you stumble across it serendipitously? Oh, man. So there's uh, a lot of people that you met in this building um, are kind of a cause of me get onto radio. Uh, Crisco Kid, who you met too, yeah. was the first person to kind of like kick the back door open for me and let me like uh, take my equipment in and kind of interview artists. I was interviewing uh, rap artists. And uh, that's where, like, me, I'm like, I, I look at what you're doing, and I'm like, oh, that guy reminds me of, like, it's like me. Like, yeah. I mean, the same way yeah. on that one. And um, 
So like I that's where I was like he was, but I was interviewing local DJs and that's yeah. how I linked with DJ Automatic. So I interviewed all the DJs in Albuquerque. Nice. Me and my homies that we had a little YouTube channel going. And uh then we interviewed Crisco and I kinda made all the rounds there and Crisco Kid was on doing the afternoons in Albuquerque. Yeah. And he was like, Yo, um, come on up, uh, I'll let you in. Film my interview for me and then I'll let you interview Yellow Wolf. Oh. And that was like the first time I interviewed a national artist. Wow. So Crisco kind of saw everything I was doing, and Crisco connected me with DJ Automatic again, and then nice. Automatic kind of like uh, radio's crazy the way it happens. It's like over like a three year span too, so like radio's kind of wild the way it happens. Like every two years, there's like shakeups and stuff, and yeah, you, I've seen people get hired for no reason. I've seen people get fired for no reason. It's oh gnarly, bro. man! But uh, there was like that kind of that kind of time, and um, I was still doing my YouTube thing. I was yeah. interning for the Source magazine. I wanted to ask about the YouTube thing. What yeah. was it like getting into interviews with all local artists and rappers? Did you feel like, oh, I have no idea what to ask at first? Or did Not, you just well, kind of, you were interested in it? And... Yeah, hip-hop has always been my passion. Nice. So uh, ever since I saw uh, Sway as a kid, I was a little kid, I've ever seen Sway. Yeah. Uh, Sway Callahan interview 50 Cent about the Get Rich or Die Trying album. And then it kind of like further expanded the album for me. Like, I understood it more, and I was like, I understood the power of, like, okay, a good interview can complement an, an album like that. Yes. And then, yes. Uh, so I was like, okay, this is something, like, when my football dream died, I was like, okay, this <laughs> this is some, like, you know what I'm saying? My football dream died. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't die, but my, I, I had two concussions, probably. No way! Concussion Dude. buddies! Hey. I, well, here we can pound. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, <laughs> brain buddies, yeah. Bruce brain buddies, CTE bros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but you got yours from football. Yeah, <laughs> I rolled off the bed one time, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then another time it was a uh, freshman year of college, and I drank way too much. Oh but, man, yeah, no. Nah, so yours are way cooler. <laughs> so I got done. I was like, uh, broadcast is kind of what I wanted to get into, and that's how yeah. I got. Into like all the YouTube stuff, and wow. um, I always wanted to, I knew I kind of wanted to be like the center of entertainment somehow. As growing up, my mom was a big dancer, she was really good yeah. at dancing. Uh, my brother's really good at dancing, had a lot of rhythm. What uh, type of dance? All types of dance. My mom was like a my mom was a trained ballerina. Whoa, dude, yeah, whoa, dude, she she reminds me every day. If it wasn't for me, she would went on to be a principal dancer at the Nutcracker. Oh my god, anybody every day oh. she tells me that every fucking day. She's like, Anthony, if it wasn't for you, you know where I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> she would look at this and be like, "Good thing you're Stephen's special guest because we're mine." <laughs> Every day, oh dude. So she was like a really good. Damn. Did she scold you on her tiptoes? Uh, she scolded I... me on the electric slide. Oh she my god. Electric slide, dog. <laughs> it's electric, <laughs> da, da, da. Like, uh, she was that's like, amazing. yeah, she was really, just really, she was a really good dancer. Yeah. Um. So that's my football dreams were crushed. Like everyone got into like parody rap stuff, right? So I had two oh, really good yeah. friends yeah. who were really good rappers. I was like, "Yo, let's do this rap group thing." They're like, all right, cool, let's do it. Uh, I could never stay on rhythm. Couldn't do rhythm at all. I could not be on oh, rhythm no. at all. I was just the worst rapper of all time. What oh, worst man. rhythmic rap? I was like Blueface before Blue. I was just a bad rapper, so didn't want to do that. Yeah, That's why yeah. I stumbled into spoken word poetry. Okay. Right? Got okay. spoken word poetry a little bit. Nice. That was like maybe like six months, and I was like, okay, this is a little too much for me. A little too much emotion. You ever been to the Poetry Jam, dog? I've never done I don't it. have a joke for it or nothing like that, but Poetry Jams, if you've ever been to one, it's a clap day. It's interesting, bro. <laughs> so I did it for a little bit, and shout out to all my poets. I come from Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is the land of amazing poets. So shout out to all my poets. That's but right. Enchantment just, and poets. Yeah. It's on the license plate. <laughs> it's on the bottom. Fine print. Fine print. <laughs> yeah, so I couldn't, uh, I was like, I couldn't do this. And then um, I was like, all right, what about comedy? And I kind of always had a nice. itch for it. Nice. And uh, when I linked with the homies who were doing the, uh, they had a, like a little YouTube, they were shooting local music videos. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And they're like, we need somebody to do interviews for us. So that's how I kind of got with them. And I would just go around with them and interview everybody. Oh. And my theory the whole time was we didn't have a comedy club in Albuquerque. Yeah. So there was no way to get people excited about a comedy show. Oh, man. There was no, like, nobody understood, like, you're going to do what? You're going to do what we see on TV? Yeah. No, nah, that don't make no sense. And, like, nobody understood, like, shout out to all the comics doing it. Yeah. Over there too, because there's amazing talented comics, but it's not a comedy city like that. They don't have a comedy club, right? And right. so I was like, the only way to get people excited is if they see you next to rappers. <laughs> so like my long term plan was like, if people if enough people saw me make rappers laugh. Oh my god! Then eventually they'd be like, okay, well he's doing this, and it kind of it worked so far. That's amazing. So, Wait, so was it you were hanging around rappers making them laugh, or were you an opening act for rappers? No, I was like, I was interviewing not, them. No, I was interviewing them, and in them I would kind of just get some kicks and get some things like that too. 
and just like kind of do that. But it was also like I'm not even gonna lie, like Instagram kind of came around. Uh huh. So just people seeing the photos and the affiliation were like, okay, this dude's doing something. Yeah. Right. So yeah. um, yeah, the long term plan was always kind of get people excited for the comedy shows and to make hip hop my day job. And so now that I'm here in Phoenix, that's kind of what we get to like is we get to li- I get to live. Oh, so, that's super cool. Yeah, man. So yeah, we were, I was doing the YouTube stuff. Then Automatic knew, and then Automatic's uh, he's like, hey, Dana's co-host is gonna leave. Uh, we, they want you to fill in for a couple of weeks and see how you do. Damn. Went up there, and then I turned into like a a call one day. It's like, yo, you want to on the night show? And I had told you before wow. we started filming, I went to school in New Jersey for a little bit. Yeah. And I was trying to get back to New Jersey, and I was just gonna go the New York route and be like, okay, like you bounce around every comedy little club and you work yeah. out for I had some friends I have a friend Mikey Mays out there doing it now oh nice yeah and uh, he actually opens up and features for Nico, a comedian by the name of Nico White okay and yeah yeah, yeah. They, they work all the way up there so um, wow. they're doing it and I was gonna go kind of chase that little thing and I got some friends up there from school yeah. but then that call came and they're like do you want your own radio show in Albuquerque and I was like I think radio people go to comedy shows like people who listen to radio go to comedy shows yeah. And so I, yeah. I just put versus like people on the internet. It's kind of hard to make them go like Instagram girls and stuff. Yeah, that's hard. It's hard, bro. Unless they get free, sh- unless they get free shit, you know, like they don't really want to be pulling up. Yeah, or you promise you're gonna show your titties. Something, I mean, yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> so it's tough. It's yeah, tough. Dog. so um, I kind of worked for me like that. And Albuquerque, like it was a radio has been such a great tool and a great platform. Yeah. And so yeah, I, I ended up doing that for about about yeah six months. And then Dana's co-host at the time, it was cra- kind of crazy. He came back and then he left again. Shout out to him, Candyman. He taught me a lot that I knew. So he's super dope. But uh, when he left again, then they linked us up. They put me down there. And at the time, I, I'm working for a marketing agency and doing my comedy stuff. And radio is kind of just like a eh, thing. Like, yeah. I'm just coming in a couple nights and like doing my show, but then leave it. Like it's not a thing. I didn't think it was really, really serious. Yeah. Then I moved to San Antonio. And that's when it became like a, like I became a full time producer, morning show producer, doing all that stuff in like a matter of like a week. I didn't really even know what I was doing. The only thing I knew was that uh, I didn't have no family there. I didn't have nobody there. The only yeah. thing I did know is that they had a comedy club. <laughs> wow. So wait, this yeah. wait, this was in Houston this or was, Albuquerque? Uh, from Albuquerque. I went from I went from Albuquerque to San Antonio. San Antonio. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now Dana and them wow. originally. Dana and them. Dana was originally from Big Spring, Texas, but she went from there to Houston, her and Ottoman in Houston, and then they went, that's their own story. Okay. <laughs> they yeah, went yeah. in Houston, and then they went back to Albuquerque, and that's when I met them in Albuquerque. I'm from Albuquerque, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I went from Albuquerque to San Antonio, and I was in San Antonio for like, uh, like yeah, about three years. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about San Antonio? I love San Antonio. Yeah? Like, Tony Parker, it's my second home. Always will be. Damn. Like, I'm always going to kind of be there. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, I love that city. And I love uh, the comedy scene there. Like, the Texas comics are working. Like the Texas really? comics at work, you gotta work, and yeah. you gotta have a lot of bar shows uh-huh. in San Antonio. Um, we uh, we ran this open mic at Jokesters Twenty Two, which is a amazing comedy club. If you're yeah. ever near San Antonio, I suggest you just reach out to people at Jokesters, mm-hmm. and uh, the, you're like it's a little box theater, damn, and you're on the side of a the South Alamo. Have you ever been to San Antonio? No, no. no. So it's on the side of South Alamo, it's right by like right by the right by the Alamo, right next to downtown. So you're dealing with like tourists and stuff walking by. You're Dang. dealing with like people on the streets, and you know what I'm saying. Sometimes it was like it, the, the owner Marsha, she just started it, so you know all that stuff. Like sometimes the mic going out, sometimes you're yelling, sometimes yeah. you're this, sometimes you're and man, the magic that happened in that little box theater, like it was cool. So I don't know why I felt like um, I was able to like kind of level up being there too and learn right. how to like. You know what I learned in San Antonio is how to bomb peacefully. (laughs) 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 Hey, that's what I learned how to do in San Antonio is like, eat a dick. That's what I learned how to do. That's kind of the spirit of it, right? Like, remember the Alamo? Like, remember the times (laughs) that I bombed real bad? No, dude, one time time I called my mom and uh, she thought I was gay. She was like, what are you trying to tell me? So you know the term kind of eat a dick, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, right, so... Um, I had planned a show at Jokes for 22 and I was like I was doing these monthly shows first two boom ha like yeah. got me a little buzz in Texas like Damn. the homies hearing about it like hey man. like you know I'm getting other comics from other cities reaching out yeah. I'm like man this is happening so the, the owner's like alright well let's throw two more dates on the board and I'm like alright November 17th boom and I'm like boom give me the, give me the Christmas date back give me that and then planning it super hype I go ahead and like the first two shows kill so I'm like this is an easy layup my friend's yeah. like alright my, my uh, mom's she's gonna bring her food truck outside so I'm like alright sick there's gonna be a lot of people it's gonna be packed uh, I'm gonna bring comics from out of town it's gonna cost a little bit more but 
we already crushed the first two shows, right? What can go wrong? Wake up the next morning after I put the deposit down on two comics. Yeah. Travis Scott announces Astroworld November 17th in Houston. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and like, no. right? And so like I work in radio. So like it was like a matter of like people like didn't even want to hear me talk if I didn't say Astro World. Like they're just you got Astro World tickets? Nope. All right, well you know, oh, have fun with your little man. comedy show. So like none of my I couldn't even get my I I knew it was gonna be bad because like I could not even get my friends excited about it. Dude. So, oh my god, that sucks. So I couldn't even get my friends excited about it and my homegirl, uh her mom has set up the food truck, and she was like, my mom's so excited because she knows she's seen the pictures from your last show, Yeah, and she's yeah. ready for all the people, and I'm just like, fuck. Oh. Next thing I know, I just remember that morning, it starts raining a little bit. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> it's it raining, like, and then, like, San Antonio rain is not like Phoenix rain. Like, it's all yeah. day type of stuff. Or, like, oh, yeah. Or like you know, Jersey rain. Jersey it's, rain. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. A little less polluted, but yeah. Dude, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, a little less polluted, but uh, so, so um, you know the homies pull up, and yeah. I mean, uh, I got a friend from out of town who, who, who bought like four or five tickets. I felt bad for him because now it's like him and like eight other people. Damn. So uh, you know the, the place we we packed it out to. We overflowed at a hundred once. Like we've done a hundred people in there sometimes. This this night there was like maybe twelve. Yeah. When we had to do start the curry, like we had to bring in people from like the lady from the food truck. I'm like, you know what? You bring all your plates. Come enjoy the show for a little bit. <laughs> um, I served her. I was like, fuck. Like I just like I had like both parts of me were stressing because like I was the event planner and I was the comic Dude. about to go first in this room of like people looking at me like it was just. I'm like, damn. So I, I was like, yeah. I was stressed. I'm like, but I'll call my mama real fast. Oh, man. So I walked back in the dumpster. I remember the little dumpster back there. I was like, Ma, said, what's going on? I was like, Ma, I'm about to eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, what? And I'm like, and she's like, it's going to fucking suck. And she's like, what's going on? I was like, nobody's here. And she's like, are you okay? I'm like, Mom, you don't even understand what's happening. And she's like, no, I don't. Are you gay? <laughs> like, what, what are you trying to tell me? Oh, and my God. I was God. just like, oh, shit. I mean, I'm not. Nobody's here at my comedy show. And she was like, oh, okay, I get you now. Um, man. <laughs> she was like, I was so, thinking it was weird yeah, you would yeah. call me right before you're about to consume a dick. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, well, you just go take that. And she, uh, eat that dick, eat son. Eat that dick, son. <laughs> oh, my God. And she gave me, like, a good words of encouragement. And then uh, we came back, and I went up, got yeah. to my thing, got pretty drunk. And forever <laughs> shout out, uh, if he's in town, or I'll connect you with them, too. Midnight Castillo out of Dallas. Okay. And then uh, Javi Luna out of Corpus Christi, Texas. Nice. They uh, usually feature for Chingo Bling and tour with him. And they yeah. absolutely, like, Midnight pulled me to the side. He could see my face. And he's like, bro, they on the vibe of the room is on you, and it, no matter if it's uh, uh, five hundred people or five people, we we'll just give them a show right now. They're here nice. to play. And nice. he was like, he's like, he actually sold like uh, the other tickets. He's like, my people are here to see me. Let's let's rock. Yeah. And man, I tell you, like by the time I got up, I just remember I left, and I was like, I suck so bad. And like twenty minutes later, ha ha ha, just snapping in there, dude, <laughs> snapping in there, snapping. Midnight is Javi and them were killing. Oh, and nice. then by the end of the show, we ended up having about 30 people, which is enough in that place to definitely catch a vibe and stuff. But nice. yeah, man, that was like, for me, that was like, oh shit, that was the worst. Because I bombed like, I, mean, I didn't do good jokes. I was like not up there telling jokes. I was like stressing and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, was, yeah. it was not yeah, a good mentally. one. Yeah, so I got through that, and that really prepped me for a lot. But yeah. um, I just wanted to interject one sec and just say, I know you mentioned how doing interviews, it really just adds another dimension to people that you like, like 50 Cent yeah. or whomever. I think this is really cool understanding the the third dimension of Anthony A. Uh. I feel like, and I feel like it's so nice to also just trade war stories or have other people that might be comics that are listening that are like, I've eaten plenty of dick. And it's nice to hear <laughs> that someone else who's so good has also consumed one. And, and it is... It's not easy. And you also mentioned you're not just a comedian, but you're like the producer. You're like the the yeah. coordinator. You're selling tickets. You're getting the different comics up and and putting deposits down for them and organizing everything. And it's just like, it seems like you as a person, whatever you've done from comedy 
radio show, whatever, you've just been able to pick these things up and been able to learn as you go. Which is been... I appreciate that. That's a nice way to You're making it. a face like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, I got it wrong. Yeah, Am I no, eating a dick right no, now? No, oh no, my no, God. no, 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 no. That's amazing. And it's, I get how it can look like that for sure <laughs> to a certain point. I guess it is. Like, I think the only thing that, like, um, I think I come from a city, like, and a little bit of that is, like, the Albuquerque in me. For sure, like yeah. of just like we're gonna get it done. Like I hate to say like Chicano way or whatever, but like because yeah, yeah. it's not a it's not a racial thing at all. But yeah. to me, that's what it kind of it's just by any means necessary. Like yeah, um, you know, like I worked at a pizza parlor, and the owner um, one bailed me out of jail, cool as fuck, right? Yeah, two. Nice. Like, I seen him literally like cutting checks, and then at the same time rolling up his sleeves and washing dishes, and literally telling me like I can't own this place and not be able to do everything front to back. Yeah, and. Like, like as a comic, I've kind of learned like, okay, you can't do everything by yourself. And now I got some, I got some homies in play, and we're growing. Yeah. But I try to take that approach to everything, and just that's how you got to kind of get it done. Because like, you'd be surprised how much of just like the little things, like the little, just like hanging out around. And well, you know, you've landed yeah. some big fish on your interviews. Yeah. yeah. Like you just kind of like just bugging them, or just just oh, a little shit. bit extra, just a little bit more, just like yeah. Like I just tell people, I just kind of never left. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll just hang yeah. out. I would literally hang out. Like, I hung out with Big Sean to get interviewed with him until four in the morning. Damn. And, like, it wasn't anything great, but that's the interview that the source ended up seeing. And they were like, okay, cool, we'll rock with it. Like, obviously, you do it. I'm like, I was like, damn, I just didn't do anything but, like, stay there a little bit longer. Yeah, so, yeah. So, like, that's yeah. kind of just like, I, and I don't know, I'm also, like, a really stubborn person to make sure that, like, if I'm with it by any means, if I want this, like, we're going to get it. So <laughs> yeah. I'm a very similar, and I kind of grew up to so my, I come from an Italian-American family, and my grandparents, like, they. Dude, my, Italian Thanksgivings are crazy. Dude, it's ins- <laughs> insane, insane. <laughs> Italian it. Thanksgivings, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's true. Don't even get me started on the Gabagool. But <laughs> no, but it, my grandpa, I mean, he didn't even finish elementary school and he ended up getting into real estate and he bought a dairy farm and he milked the cows every morning yeah and he would just do everything and then my wife too she came from brazil and she was able she learned another language which is amazing and then now she's in the workforce and she's doing stuff and she just does everything herself and i grew up around these amazing people where i felt like okay i can do if i am waiting for something to get done What's stopping me from doing the rest of the things to be able yeah. to get it done? Because it's just me complaining or me doing. And then it's cool to see other people like that and see how much you've accomplished by being able to just get out there and do. And if you guys... Where's the camera? This one. Do it! Just do it! Nike's logo is famous for a reason. Swoosh! Do it! That's the check mark being like, I did it. So, mm. that, I, I'm sorry. I, just I was going like... Complete shot of buff with it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, just do, do it. I love. I love that. This is amazing with like no mics. I feel like I can walk around and shit. Oh god, I got so excited. But anyway, you, so you you just did it, and and you grew up that way. And um, like, also too for me, like the uh, I, I draw a lot of parallels with sports because it's kind of mm, the sports nice. that kind of saved me. Nice. Um, and like football, like the football team I played on, we we only had like a certain amount. Of, we like you had to play both sides of the ball. Yeah. Offense and defense. Yeah. And I think that kind of taught my brain to kind of like be able to switch like a lot of like, I'm gonna uh, do everything. Nice. So yeah, that's kind of with that. But because it definitely wasn't in school. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Same. <laughs> school I was not. Yeah. It wasn't wasn't there. But God. Anyway, I was going to ask about because you've been, you know, another thing I wanted to ask about is I love the radio names that all the people you've mentioned have like. Crisco kid mm-hmm. is it because he's slick that he's called Crisco? Man, so Crisco, well, yeah, he's slick too. I'm gonna okay, you, yeah, but okay. Crisco kid, he used to have this wild ass hair that like it would just be like slick and shit like that. Like, oh, it would just be like, yeah, like, like okay. Crisco, like they, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's what that was. I mean, you know, Crisco kid, yeah, that's a radio legend in himself right there. So, that's amazing. Yeah, that's where that name comes from. And then Candyman, DJ Automatic, yeah. which I guess DJ name as well. But yeah, no, I hate it too because like when I have to put all my DJ friends like on a guest list, dog, like, <laughs> it's like DJ Yellow Wave, it's DJ Automatic, Crisco Kid, Complex. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is this Complex? Yeah, so yeah, whenever I got to do that, that's a little annoying. We have DJs and their names. I was going to ask about Anthony A because it's it's a little sh- it's just shortened. Yeah, uh, beautiful alliteration, Anthony A. W- did was that bestowed upon you, or were you like mm. today? I'm Anthony A. So okay, so I, I was telling you that my mom like didn't like she remind me that she didn't plan me. 
Yeah, so, <laughs> like, amongst that, like, they named me, like, the name they picked for me also belonged to a, mm, do not cut this out by itself, it's going to look weird, but my name, I shared my name, I don't know how to properly say this, but I shared my name with a registered sex offender. Oh, right. Oh, right. Got it. Right. Got it. And, my, and like, I didn't really know that until I got on Google one day and I was like, let me Google myself. I was ah. like, Anthony Almonds are. Oh, that's not me. And so that was like one ding on it. Right. And then, oh, when, um, so I was like, Anthony A. And I kind of just rocked it out for comedy. Yeah. I got your radio and they could call me Anthony. Anthony, was it Anthony the Duke A or Anthony A the Duke? And then I was that's still a little too long. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just let my full name rock. Anthony Almond Saad. That's nice. that's pretty sexy, dude. Chic as fuck, man. dude. Right? And then there's a girl by the name of Belisa Almansad. Do you know who that is? No, Cardi B. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> wow, so, uh, wow. Yeah, dude. So Cardi B, Anthony, I don't know if it's a thing, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So uh, I don't. Know. I just like Anthony. A, nah, that's something I just rocked with, and it just kind of flowed, and it's just yeah. it's like me, but not me. Yeah, yeah, I guess, Got yeah. Because my friends back home they call me Ant or Ants. Oh, okay, yeah. Ant. Okay, yeah. okay. I like that. But yeah, yeah. No, nah, it wasn't bestowed. They tried to give me the Duke, and that was cool. And I thought about it for a little bit, and then they wanted to, for a little while call me the Kid. And shout out to Larry who came up with that one. But I was like, Nah, cause yeah. you can't be a Kid forever. We can't do that. But shout out right. to Billy the Kid. Yeah, hey, there you go. Bye, bow. I've been looking for, I want a radio name eventually. I don't know if I'll ever do radio, but mm-hmm. I feel like I need, maybe for the podcast even. Dude, you can get some AKAs. Let's get those flowing. Stefan now. Satani, AKA uh, Long Haired Luke. No, <laughs> AKA. Uh, let's go. Chestnut no. Locks. I don't know. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> I love Long Haired Luke. Is what long Haired Luke. Long Haired Luke. I feel more like a Luke than I do a Stefan. I don't feel sophisticated <laughs> enough. If I was wearing a polo, per Perhaps, and I read War and Peace, then I could say that I'm Stefan. If I, if I traveled the Cote d'Azur, I feel like I could be Stefan. But I'm more like a long haired Luke. Yeah, uh, yeah. Fix that vocab, Luke. Oh, man. Yeah. A Stefan doesn't drink White Claws. That's a Luke thing. So, I don't know. But, anyway. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, how has it been, by the way doing radio during quarantine, during COVID. Has anything really changed or has it been, I'm sure interviews with people. Um, like, yeah, we're not like out, like there's more concerts and stuff. Oh right? yeah. Like, yeah. So that's yeah. like a big like, Fair, yeah. live gathering, which is like for me for a long time, like that's really kind of what just overall I was really in the business of in between, regardless if it's like comedy or radio. Yeah. I, um, you know, I, I mean, we, I used to throw up some pretty fun parties too. Not just like comedy shows, like just parties. Yeah. And uh, so, like, that was a big thing that I, like, made a lot of income on, too. And so, like, just the whole live entertainment field being completely, like, cut Dude. was, like, probably the biggest thing. I think, like, when it comes to, like, uh, me and the Dana Cortez or the Dana Cortez show team, like, we, uh, the first year into our syndication, we basically kind of just, like, for better or worse, almost didn't really have too many callers. Mm-hmm. So we were never really dependent on calls. So we mm-hmm. were really dependent on being able to make create content within ourselves. Yep. And so when yep. everything kind of went down, we were just it was easy for us. We really, really like in regards to like producing content and being ready for it. There really was no kind of change. Really, nice. it allowed us more time to not have to worry about going out. To yeah. Just be like, okay, we got the live stream up and popping, and we got everything rolling like that. So just the removal of live events kind of took like a took a leg out. Of That's just kind of, of like okay, let's let's re- re- rearrange how we're gonna just kind of like think about this whole game plan and attack and everything too. I see, because and also you guys start is it five to eleven your guys' uh, show? Yeah, now we're going five to eleven during the pan pandemic hours. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was, and I'll ask about stand up too. Because the show that we that you were at that you performed at was like. I think it ended at 10 or something like that. So yeah. you can't get your eight hours of sleep nah, in there. Nah, nah, You're like two REM cycles yeah. max. <laughs> nah, I can't I can't remember the last time I got eight hours of sleep. Dude, yeah. same. It's yeah. been a rough 25 years. But <laughs> it's, yeah, I, it's it's got to be tough. And, and I actually, oh my God, I remember when I was living in Jersey mm-hmm. and I would work in New York City. So, where, my, so wait, where you living? Elizabeth? I lived in Elizabeth, okay. yeah. And then I worked in Manhattan. So I'd take the train. And I remember I'd get up at around four fifty. Trying to head to the path. To work. Oh my god, dude! Oh, I would take the path out of New York. All yeah. the time. and yeah. you know what? Oh, you did. Yeah. That was a nightmare, yeah, man. Yeah. An absolute nightmare. And so, then <laughs> there were like, yeah. Anyways, I was just gonna say. So 
I, I would like wake up at 4.30, 4.50, go to the gym, get back, wash up, get ready to take the train with wife. Then I'd go and then I'd get back around 6. We'd go to bed at around 11, 30, 12. Oh, yeah. So, That's that East Coast living. Yeah. And I was I was talking with my wife about it today. And I was like, yeah, I was doing just fine. Grinding off four hours of sleep. She was like, you were falling asleep onto your plate of spaghetti. You were not fine. <laughs> we would have friends over. And I would just, t- I'd be like, I'm going to sit on the couch real quick. And then I'd be yeah. passed out. So did- <laughs> I was, was going to ask for you, like, how did you or how are you able to be able to balance a 5 a.m. start with, Cause you're getting up way before that. Man, you know what, dude? Low key, I've been on is like not really. I don't really drink too too much. Oh, okay, um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've been drinking. I've drink. I ain't, don't don't get it twisted. But I definitely <laughs> he drinks, guys. He drinks. Don't don't, <laughs> don't worry. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> don't do that to me. Don't, don't be like don't don't click it next. Don't be like all right next show. He's Pro- one of those people. Nah, we already off that. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Promo. <laughs> I, I don't really drink. I don't really drink. <laughs> Anthony, hey, coming up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I kind of cut a little bit back on that and. Um, yeah. I think, man, for me, like, it, like I, well, I guess I just have to be real because I have to be. I had, like, a lot of sleep issues. Yeah. So I was almost working for, where I, I um, early on, like, I, uh, even when I was in high school, like, would have to, um, I take different sleep, like, sleep medications. Yeah, like that. yeah. Either yeah. they were, like, too much or, like, yeah. not enough or they just didn't do anything for me. And so for me, like, a way to combat the sleep was just kind of working until I was dead ass tired. Like, when I was doing, like, the interview stuff and, like, comedy was kind of just, like, a passion, mm-hmm. um, I would, like, email, like, 10 uh, record label reps every single day. I'm just, like, working until I got tired, really. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of how it was for me. I was not on the other side of, like, I, a person who was, like, constantly tired and all that. I was kind of, like, I had trouble sleeping. I had trouble yeah, sleeping. Yeah, yeah. So. That's, um, that's so funny, man. So, yeah, I would kind of do that. But now, like, after, like, I've been doing it for, like, uh, yeah, man, close to, it started, like, right when I was, like. Oh, we're on like nine years. I think of like my overall scope of everything. Yeah, it's like starting comedy, starting interviews, and like now it's like balancing and like sleeping right and like naps, naps. When I went, like when I made this change of morning radio, yeah, it's all about naps, dog. I nap. It's all about naps. I nap. Okay, yeah, I'm a okay. napper. Are you a napper? Or no? I uh, I was. Yeah, now. until like the last two weeks. My wife and I, we've been working from home. Okay, so we'll just lunchtime nap, get mm. a quick REM in, and yeah. then. Get up and we're now. What through. constitutes a nap to you, time wise? Oh, dude! Oh my God! So the research that I've done indicates there are very specific time intervals in which you can grab a REM cycle from a nap. Yeah, it's like fifteen Two, minutes. Yeah, I thought it was like twenty thirty. You can yeah. kind of just yeah, I, yeah, but, something like that. But it's like if you do more than two hours. You're, yeah, you might as well just go to bed. You're, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. the slumber just pulls you in so deep when you wake up. Just, oh, oh yeah. God, I'm so tired. What the hell? <laughs> I hate those. Those are the worst naps. So, like, 20 to 30 minutes is I good. Hate, I hate napping, like, at 4.30 p.m. Because you wake up, like, at 6 or, like, you wake up, like, at 5.30. It's a little bit dark and shit. Yeah. And you wake up because it also looks like 5.20 a.m. <laughs> oh, I hate that shit, Jack. <laughs> That is so funny because I, you know, you look. I don't know how old you are, but you look fresh. Mm-hmm. You have no bad. I I look way worse than no, you. No, you look- and I'm like 21 years old. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not long hard Luke with his lies. But <laughs> uh, you look great. You're doing the all the great things. I was gonna ask. We're gonna get into the advice. Okay. But okay. where can people find you? What have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Uh, man, dude. First of all, uh, it, uh Sally May is watching. I'm gonna get back to you. <laughs> right. Pandemic's been hurting us. <laughs> Joe gave it till October, so stop calling me. That's okay? right. All right, uh, Anthony A four hundred on Instagram is probably the easiest and quickest way to get a hold of me. Anthony Almanzar on Facebook, still accepting friends. Why not? Uh, TikTok, <laughs> Anthony A. Uh, Dana Cortez show is the biggest platform I'm on. And shout out to the gang, Dana Cortez, DJ Automatic. And nice. uh, yeah, just be listening on your radio if you like in the uh, southwest part of the United States of America. Or up I twenty five, up I ten. You could probably hear us on your favorite hip hop station. So shout that's out to, right. Shout out to everybody. But, and uh, yeah, Anthony A four hundred. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that. Find me. And your Instagram is just chock full of good entertainment, comedy, and Appreciate overall that. facts. You've gotten your phone stolen by <laughs> many people, <laughs> including like Brad Williams, Chingo Bling, yeah. Baby Bash. <laughs> I love that. I love, yep. Stole Anthony A's phone. <laughs> 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 love That's that. Funny. Beautiful. Man, yeah. 
All right, we're going to get into the advice okay. portion of the podcast. And so before we get to get into the questions, I like to ask my guests, and I like to center us with an inspirational quote so we can feel jazzed and be able mm. to answer these questions with the clearest and most inspired mind. So I, do you have any, Anthony, I, do you have any inspirational quotes that you cling to in the dark days when you yeah. need a nap or you need to just get something uh, done? That too. Oh, got two. We'll only accept one. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Okay, We're okay, two. Okay, we'll okay, accept two. It. We've got okay. diapers. Well, if it's only one, it's going to be this one. <laughs> Condoms, always cheaper than diapers. <laughs> I think that was Gandhi, right? <laughs> <laughs> I need more diapers. <laughs> that's, that's an original, Anthony. Hey, Gandhi, you still my shit. Anyway, I love my thoughts on Gandhi because they said that dude. Anyway, um, no, but the second one is uh, be confident enough to lead and humble enough to serve. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, I got is that, that an Anthony A one too? No, nah, well, I got I heard it from my homies uh, Jamal Green and uh, nice. in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then he I think heard it from our well, not my big like I knew him association, but his name's Humble, and okay. he's a sports agent from he went to school in New Mexico for a little bit, and he was a very big uh, hip hop like like a basically our version of P Diddy at the time, but he ended up going yeah. on to manage like Arian Foster and like a lot of big. Uh, NFL players now too but Damn. that was always kind of a thing I think I learned from or at least somebody in that clique told me them words and that kind of just like stuck like you know be confident enough to lead and humble enough to do whatever you gotta do serve like that's let's get the job done I love that you, know, you gotta be ready for, I think that encompasses like alright sometimes you're gonna step up and make that call or sometimes you're gonna be like okay and roll with it and let's get it done so yeah, yeah. yeah. confident enough to leave humble confident enough to lead humble enough to serve that's I love that I lo- and I love that how that ties back into what we were talking about too yeah. being those people that did things and, and you did mention a little bit too oh, where it's like I should be like eat dick yeah yeah you just gotta just <laughs> eat the chomp dick. on that dick yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man my mom's gonna be proud of this episode <laughs> dude my mom's always like get more dick jokes more dick jokes <laughs> dude, Doris loves dick jokes <laughs> my parents are devout Catholics and they I don't think I've ever said the word dick in front of them. <laughs> so, until now, uh, long-haired Luke coming at you with the dick jokes. It's long-haired Luke. Long-haired <laughs> yeah, it's Luke. not Stefan. It's long-haired Luke. <laughs> just brings the demons out. So those are the great quotes. I've actually got an inspirational quote here. It's not by any person. It's by a robot. <laughs> the robot's name is Inspirobot. Okay. And so what it does is it uses AI to generate some of the most inspirational quotes known to man, and it just makes its own. Okay. So what it does... so. We're going to try. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it misses. But I'll read this one, and we'll try and see if it makes any sense. This week, InspireBot says, tickling each other includes tickling ourselves. <laughs> I, I believe tickling each other is tickling ourselves because I think that is like a way of saying, like, uh, you know, you... You you receive what you put out. Is that the thing? Like, <laughs> like, it's like tickle karma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think so, right? Like, I mean, because yeah, it's not like overly tickled. Like, I mean, what is tickled? What do you think about that? I think uh, tickling each other includes tickling ourselves. I mean, maybe metaphorically, if you're, t- I'm tickled by this situation. I mean, I'm tickled to be here in the radio station. <laughs> I'm. I hope I'm tickling you a little yeah, bit. Yeah. See, well, you tickle yourself. It tickles me. Inside. <laughs> <laughs> like, it tickles me, dude. <laughs> That's the promo. That's... Oh. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So I think now that we're nice and inspired, we can go on into the questions. Now this one's found by our fan Liz. Thank you, Liz. And it's she found it on Reddit. It says, "I don't know how to admire beautiful things, such as a beautiful song, a work of art, the sky." I feel like just absorbing the beauty is not enough. I feel the need to do something about the source of beauty. It sparks something untamable within me. But what to do about that? I feel lost. Damn. Damn, man. So what's the last beautiful thing that you, Anthony A., have witnessed? Maybe a sky, a portrait, a song, a Mm. girl, an Instagram model. I mean, you know what? You're my real homie, so I'm going to have to keep it. Uh, <laughs> I, every part of me wants to go for a joke, but I'm going to have to keep it really real with you. Please. Really, really honest. Uh, I hugged my niece for the first time in a long time. Oh, oh, the yeah. heart strings. Yeah. Oh, long-haired yeah. Luke is gone. Now it's <laughs> Stefan is back. Yeah, I, yeah, I ordered something. Dude. I got to reconnect with my niece for a while, and that was, uh, yeah, that was everything. Oh. I was like, that was it, dog. 
Oh my god, yeah. man. Yeah, that was that was like I was like, all right, this is cool. This is good. And she was so jazzed, like it came on like a time when I was like kind of like cuz like doing what you know, you put a lot of time into like, you know, getting these interviews up and doing it. Like yeah. it takes time and you're just away yeah. from people, you know? So you yeah. kind of wonder like, okay, is this working or is it nothing? So she was like, I heard you on the radio, da 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 da. And she was like, so charged. So I was like, all right. Like it was, that was like for me, that was like the best, the most beautiful thing I've experienced in a while too. And she's like going up to be like a smart young woman. So that's cool. So yeah, that's, that's what that is for me. Oh my God. It hit yeah. me right in the heartstrings because I haven't hugged my parents in so long. But I was able to, my dad, I went on a fishing trip with my dad. Oh, okay. And it was a couple months ago. And I had always wanted to do it before he died. He's still alive, thank God. And I don't, I don't think he's going to die. But I th- it's one of those things, man, where you think about it and it makes you feel so good thinking about yes, it. Yes. That you never do it. And I remember I was getting a new job and I had three weeks off. And then my wife, it was because of my, thank you, wife. Love you, Bianca. Eu te amo muito. She told me, she's like, why don't you go do that fucking thing that you said you would do like five years ago with your dad? A little nicer than that. And, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should. So I ended up doing it. And I got to sit on the boat with my dad, catch zero fish. Boom. But we... That's part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we had our banter and I, we got to talk. There was a hug almost. And so it was a good That's time. It. That's it. That's it was what a, it is. It, it really, it, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. So I, I like that. Oh yeah, I forgot what that girl was even talking about. So she can't appreciate yeah. shit like that. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> so Miss Reddit can't appreciate anything because you're on Reddit the whole damn time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. I, dude. Who gives a shit about a sky that much? Think about people that are close. It's people. There you go. I think I think she needs to find what makes her happy inside, and that could be even. You could start at the most shallow thing. Yeah. Right. Like if it's the most. Hopefully it's not a vice. Hopefully it's not a crazy thing that makes you geeked. But right. like if you can find something that's like positively impacting your life and that makes you want to like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. Build from that and go from there. My yes. Queen. <laughs> yes. There you go. Love it. Love it. All right. We're going to move on to our next segment, which is called positive spin. Mm. And so what this is, if you ever had a bad thing happen to you and yeah. think and you think, oh, man, this sucks. Well, I, I hate this. Now I'm never going to be able to do what I wanted. That's bad. And we want to be able to train ourselves okay. to think of the positives so that when something bad happens, we can train our mind to think, oh, this isn't so bad. I can do this. I can do that. So I have some scenarios here for you, Anthony. Right, yeah. And we're going to try and think of the positives for you. Okay. This first scenario, you end up, I don't know if you're driving. Okay. I don't know what you're doing. Okay. You end up in a freak accident and you break both of your hands. Okay. You can't use them. The doctor says, I don't know what you did, Anthony A. Your hands are immobile. You can't use... Yes, there you go. Acting out the part. You can't move them for a year. Okay. So, positives. What What's going to happen? What can you do? Where Where can you find the beauty in life? I can't accidentally point at somebody. <laughs> I mean, that's like a lot. Like, I guess you can. Maybe you can. You bet that motherfucker over there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they're not going to do anything about it because they're like, oh, yeah, I saw the way you pointed. Yeah. I, I'm not going <laughs> to... Can't mess with him. No, 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 no. Um, I think you're gonna have to discover new ways of masturbation. <laughs> oh, that is very true. So you're like, gonna come up with a product I mean, that's it's like gonna, making millions. At first, like even the thought of that made me get a little depressed. Like what? But then you're just like, okay, you know, we'll work through this shit. We'll figure a way. We'll figure out a way. We'll figure out a way. Get it done. Well, we all, guys always yeah. figure out a way. There's no way that you're gonna be celibate for one year yeah. just because of hands. Yeah, those hands. Nah, I'm gonna figure out a way to do that. So. That that's like you know, that's like two off top right there. That was the f- to be real with you when I picked this, I was like that's that was the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah, it's like right. how do I how do I do this? What how do I do this? Like, yeah, we'll do I like feet? Yeah, I, I, yeah I, mean, I think like you know, I got I mean my my the inside of my was like pretty soft. <laughs> Just lotion them up. Yeah. And then, there you There's go. There's a reason why the logos aren't showing on today's show. <laughs> 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 Amazing. That's what this podcast is here for, to showcase innovation and ingenuity. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. The, the next one is, you've got your friend called, says, I'm coming over. You're excited. You're pumped. Okay. He's going to come over to your house. Doorbell rings. Answer the door. It's not your friend. Mormons. Or Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. Somebody that wants to talk to you about the good Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. Or Buddha. I don't, mm. I don't want to be specifically pointing at, love you mom, Jesus. Okay. Anything. Okay. Astrology. Okay. 
Are you a big astrology guy? What's your sign? Capricorn. Oh, nice. I'm not thinking my Earth sign. Nice. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think I don't uh, know anything about it. Me but neither. Sounds cool. Yeah, these yeah. people like women. I've got a know. tattooed on my chest, <laughs> but I don't know anything. <laughs> oh man. Uh, <laughs> so if it's like you know, if it is a people of organized religion, there you go. Day, um, I'm gonna be like, hey guys, uh, I ain't got time right now. There's gonna be a lot of debauchery going on, but <laughs> my brother one time was reborn with y'all, so I see y'all. Have a good day. Oh, what a beautiful... That's why yeah. you're the radio host. I think, I think it was like, I see y'all. I, I lo- <laughs> y'all carry on. And listen, you guys are around a lot of brown people. Right? <laughs> and you guys have more courage. And I won't be nice to y'all because like, I don't know what's going to happen next door. Hector's dog's out loose right now. Like He ain't got him chained up. So if I was you guys, I'd actually go that way. <laughs> so y'all be good, though. And then, yeah, go by my way. So but good. Yeah, man, and, and Albuquerque, you, uh, I grew up with, like, they would come knock on our door in the South Valley of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Like, South Valley is, like, any south side of any town. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they were always, like, brass, man. Shout out to the Mormons, the dudes on the bikes, you know what I'm saying? Dude, for, I, I, they have been nothing but nice to me. Yeah. They, they come over to my hat, well, they when I lived in an apartment in close to Desert Ridge, they would always come over and be like, can we take out your trash? And I'd be like, really, you want to do that? And they're like, well, we'll talk about Jesus. And like, <laughs> Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe next time. Rain check. But they've always been nice. They, I now. look very Mormon, too. <laughs> so maybe that could be my radio name. Steph the Morm. <laughs> Steph, no, Mormon in always. the morning. Oh. <laughs> no, we're going somewhere now, dude. We're going somewhere now. We're going straight to Utah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Mitt so Romney like, Radio. What up, though? Put us on in Mexico, too. <laughs> Mitt Romney Radio. <laughs> you know, Mitt's cool in Mexico, right? Like, Is he really? Yeah, he's part of the, he was like part of the Mormon Mexicans, like the... Mexican, yeah, they be. You don't know anything about that? Okay, so on Arrested Development, they talked about something like that, but I didn't know that was based off of real life. Yeah, there was a bunch of Mormons in Mexico, and Mitt Romney was like down with some of them. But anyway, yeah, shout wow. out to y'all. But yeah, wow. that's how the album went down. Amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's how the album went down. <laughs> oh, amazing. Oh, God. Well, that was very positive, Anthony. We're going to go on to our last question. Okay. And then. Okay. It's the end of the show. Oh, man, it's that. So this one, we talked a little bit about sleeping. This was from our fan, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. And he found it on Reddit. It says, how do I stop having nightmares? I have nightmares every night. How can I fix this? Do you dream? Um, I smoke weed, so not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you yeah, dream? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I... I Yes, I dream, and it's terrifying. Really? It's so, yeah, but it's not real nightmares, yeah. like getting murdered. It's more like forgetting my pants and going to the store. It's that type of nightmare. It's so awkward. Do you know what last, the last nightmare scene that happened to me in the store is, I was a town complex about this, is I went, and I'm not like a big pickle person. Yeah. But like, if I, cra- if I crave a pickle, like I'm craving a pickle. Like you go right. to like the grocery store, and you get like the, like, the hosher, like the big ones, like the yeah the pickles. Of course. And I went and bought my pickle, and the dude forgot to pack it. And I was walking out, and next thing I know, I hear, hey, sir, I got your pickle. <laughs> and I'm like, what? This is me by myself, a grown man, and this kid just be like, here's a pickle, sir. Here's your solo pickle that you bought, you fucking weirdo. He just gave everybody. I bet he. he the guy bought a fucking one pickle. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> one fucking pickle. Took a picture of it. Yeah, put it on like, Instagram. Yeah, this motherfucker bought a pickle. It's like somebody bought this. One Dude, I was so embarrassed. I don't think I've ever, I haven't been that embarrassed in a long time. But I was like, motherfucker, give me my fucking pickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that amazing. was a nightmare for me. But so for you, it's like just walking around with no pants on and shit. You can look you got nice thighs, though. Yeah, I appreciate that. But not in the dream. <laughs> oh, God. I skip leg day in my dreams because it is just very small. <laughs> And I looked at, and my boss is there, and he's like, dude, um, great job on the report yesterday, but not so great on the wardrobe <laughs> oh, today. Man. No pants. Oh, so, right. My uh, piece of advice to the homie is um, put your phone down, like, at least an hour before you start really going to bed. You know what I'm saying? Really, I like, detach from this, like, you know, this sure. shit for what we're on, so don't detach now. Yeah, I don't detach right now, right now but after, after this, this one. remember, yeah, set it. A- yeah. Hey Siri, no. Hey Siri, <laughs> detach. But it's true, man. I feel yeah. like whenever I am on <clears throat> my phone or an electronic device, I am wired. Yeah. So I feel like I can't sleep. I, it's harder to get to sleep. And then after that, 
I might have nightmares. I think it just doesn't stop your brain from going. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'm also like on this weird like current like little kick of like wondering like I think like certain people are meant to have uh, platforms, right? Like I think yourself, like certain right. people are meant to have oh. everything that we like the ability to say like they're just uh, dot connectors and people who are meant to communicate and like you know back in like before like you just go right. far back. There's always storytellers. There's always message men. There's always people like that. And like I just think, and yes, yes, right. Yes. And there's always, you know, and I just feel like now with social media, it's almost to the point to where like, I think people are just like colliding with their messages too soon. Like, yeah. you know, not everybody, dog. Like, I'll be real. Some of my friends on Facebook and shit. I'm like, yo, Zuck, get this mother. Like, yo, he he is too stupid to like be <laughs> communicating with other people from the other side of the country who are also equally as stupid. Yes. And now you got two stupid people arguing, and if and the platform just wants the negativity and the engagement. Yeah, so that's all that we're consuming. Yeah, it's a weird. I'm gonna say, damn, this is getting a little interesting. It's getting a little interesting to me. I wonder where it's gonna go because yeah. it is to the point where I have had family members, I've had friends talk about who they've unfriended or getting in arguments, and I'm just sitting there with the pop. At first, I was sitting there with the popcorn, being like, "This is entertaining." Now I'm like, we need to stop this yeah, yeah, yeah. because I see the fires getting close, and I'm like, no, I don't want anything to do with this, and I want. A loving society with harmony and peace, and it's just not getting that way. Dude, I, so I don't know what's happening, man. I mean, I don't know. I just I encourage everybody to put the phone down a little bit, especially my man's. I'm not sure that's gonna stop your nightmares. Maybe, maybe yeah. you got some nightmare shit happening. I don't know, dude. I heard one guy. He was like, "You're already married, so you're over that side." But this one guy was like, "Yeah, I was dating this girl. Next thing you know, her fiance <gasps> showed up at my door knocking. Like, what's up?" I was like, what the fuck? Oh, my. Oh, my God. Hell no. That's a nightmare right there, bro. Holy shit, man. Yeah. That was another nightmare of mine. My wife's fiance showed up at the door, and I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) And I didn't have pants. (laughs) Even worse. I went to fight him, and he's like, bro, are you going to put on some pants? (laughs) He was like, you forgot your pickle. And I was like, oh, Oh, no, not again. Look at this guy, Long hair Luke, baby. Yeah, long, long hair Luke. I'm logging. Can't come oh. back, dog. Genie's out the bottle, baby. Oh, God. Oh, man. Well, we've reached the end of the podcast. So, I want Anthony A. Mm-hmm. Huge thank you to oh, you man. for sharing this time with me, sharing the studio space, and sharing just love and energy and support and dreams. Dude, thank you for everything. And thank you all for listening. If you're here listening to it right now, I so much appreciate you. At your attention at the end of the day it's a blessing to have anybody's attention I appreciate your time Stefan aka Long Hair Luke um, and let, let, us, let it be known like you made me like oh I saw you interviewing Felipe Esparza and like Mark Norman and stuff and I'm watching your interviews I'm like damn this dude really doing it and then you uh-huh. come in here and make me feel just as special like that ain't some shit I ain't ever gonna forget so dude, man shout out to my man's right here he's, oh, he's the truth man oh, he's the truth oh, man. man and what you're doing for the sake of comedy, keep it pushing, using it as a tool, and it's like helping. I think it's giving comedians a platform. So oh. if he ever reach out to you and you ain't doing this, you goofy. Uh, you stupid. That's right. Go Kids. horse, you're goofy. Yeah, come on. Uh-huh. Come on. Dude. So come on. Yeah, come on my podcast. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can make it Disney themed if you want. Whatever you want to do. But I, I really, I'm horrible at taking compliments, but I really appreciate the kind words, man. And first off, you are as special as those comics. And you are, I swear to God, you, I don't have like a diamond eye like little Uzi yet, but I feel yeah. like if I had one that could tell the future, it would see you up there on stage touring, headlining, and you've got the presence, you've got the jokes. I really, I feel like you're there. Love, so. I appreciate that, man. We're going to get there. We're going to fully get there, and then we're going to do this again, and then we're going to do it again, and again, and again, and again. Yes, yes, <laughs> amazing. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, listeners. But Love you guys, by the way. You guys make this possible. You're not paying me anything, but you make it possible because my self-esteem goes just a little higher. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Anthony. Bye-bye. All right. Perfect. Beautiful.